Howdy folks, I'm Tenacious Tomatillos, tactfully toppling towering turnip trees. I'm Amber. And here are more turnip trees for us to topple, although I didn't know, Amber, that there were such things as yeah, turnip trees. Yeah, I was gonna trees. say the same thing. Yeah, so it's a little strange, a little weird. But let's get started. Alright folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a Jerk for Buying a Guitar with My Boyfriend's Credit Card? I'm a 23-year-old female, and my boyfriend, a 27-year-old male, will call him Mark. We have been together for three years now, and I decided that I wanted to get my boyfriend a gift. Our anniversary is coming up, and I wanted to do something really nice for him. He's a guitarist, and he has been wanting this one particular guitar, a Jackson King 5 Series Pro. He talks about it and said he would love to own one. So I have always heard that the best gifts to give someone are something that they will never get for themselves. I was at a guitar store and I was looking for gifts and then I saw it. It was the Jackson King 5 Series Pro. Now it was not exactly the one that he wanted and he always showed me, but it was close enough. It had the weird part where the strings attach with that little lever thingy and the bottom of the guitar is all spiked. Sorry, I don't know guitars. I knew he wanted it, so I thought that I would surprise him. We are by no means rich, but we live comfortably, so I didn't think that he would mind paying $2,400. I ended up buying him the guitar. I did use his credit card, which now, in hindsight, I guess wasn't a good idea. I first just figured that it wouldn't matter since he never makes me pay for anything. I figured that it would be okay to use as a gift. I took it out of the case, and I came, and I propped it up in the living room, and I waited for Mark to get home. When he came in, I hugged him, and I kissed him, and I told him, happy anniversary. I got you something special. He went into the living room and just about jumped through the roof with excitement. He instantly started thanking me and telling me all about how special this particular guitar was in comparison to the regular King 5. And I just said, what can I say? I have good tastes. And we talked, and then it happened. How much did you end up paying for this thing? Mark asked me. I nonchalantly answered that it was like $2,500, but I didn't think that we would have a problem paying it off. Then he just stared at me, and he asked me what I was talking about. I proceeded to explain how I wanted to do something nice, but $2,400 was a bit much up front, so I put it on his credit card, and I figured that we would pay it off together. Mark is not an angry person, but he was more angry than I've ever imagined that he could be. He just started yelling at me. I know I messed up. He could at least be a bit grateful that someone cares this much about him as I do, right? But he ended up bringing it back to the guitar store, but I guess they can't return it because it was on a CC or something like that. I don't remember. When I got home, I thought that he would be in a better mood, but he didn't end up coming home until late. And then when he did, he just went straight to bed. This was two days ago, and he still hasn't spoken to me. Update. So thank you everyone for the comments, even if some of you were a bit harsh. I can now see perfectly clearly how extremely foolish I had been. I'd like to address something that I mistakenly said, as well as an update on events over the last few days. For starters, I did not buy him a Pro Series King 5. The guitar that I actually purchased was a Jackson King 5 Select Series KV2, and it was in a used case, if you were wondering. So Mark has been staying with his mom for the last couple of days, and we finally had a chance to sit down and work things out. We went to a small pizza place to eat and talk. I paid, haha. He explained why he was upset and basically was everything that you guys said. I apologized and we began to figure out what's going to happen next. I took some advice from here and I took a few of my expensive clothes to a designer clothes store called Future Fashion and then I got them looked at to see if they would be worth anything. I have some supreme stuff just like a hoodie and a few stickers that I got for my birthday last year as well as a couple of designer belts. Gucci and Versace, and one Prada handbag. Before any of you comment, none of these things were gifts from my boyfriend. They are gifts from my parents, Supreme, and the belts and handbag are from a shopping spree that my mom took me on before I started college, URI. They gave me $375 for the Supreme hoodie. I didn't want stickers, 
shaking my head. I got $850 for the belt, and he wouldn't take the Prada bag since it's not their specialty. But I'm going to take it to a few other places tomorrow, but they said that I should be able to get like $900 for the bag. I told my boyfriend that this was my plan, and right now, counting the money from my savings account, $500, literally cleaned me out, and the stuff that I sold, I have $1,750 for, and the potential $900 for the bag should be, according to my math, $26.25, which means that I'll still have some left over to buy him a real gift. I told Mark, and he was glad, and he is going to be taking the money to pay off a chunk of that credit card so that we won't get interest or whatever. I don't know how that works, to be honest. As far as our relationship goes, things will be okay. Mark has calmed down and just wants three things to happen. First, I'm not allowed to use this credit card without permission, which most of you predicted. Secondly, I need to show that I fully understand my actions. And three, pay him back. He basically told me that as long as those conditions are met, then we will basically return back to normal. He does really like the guitar, which he admits in a silly way to try and lighten the mood at the end of the talk. And he does appreciate the thought of it, but like you all have said, what I did was wrong, and I will never let it happen again, and I'm going to fix it. All right, folks, what do you think? I mean, I think, oh yeah, OP was in the wrong. Uh, the update pretty well sums up why. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, she was spending money that wasn't hers, and even if you do have some kind of joint finances situation... If you're making large purchases, it's generally something you want to consult with your partner. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, every couple is going to have a different dollar amount on what's an acceptable amount of money to spend without talking to the other person. Some couples will always, you know, say every single dollar amount that they spend. Some will, you know, have a rule for, like, a thousand dollars or something like that. But at the end of the day, I think they just needed to work out... Uh, what that limit was because i don't think that she clearly understood that he wouldn't appreciate this mm -hmm. and what do you think of her saying that she's going to get him a real gift now i mean that i don't understand because if she's already paid him twenty five hundred dollars then she bought the guitar outright yeah you know? yeah so it's like you know you don't need to buy him anything more at this point yeah Put something in your savings so you're not like wiped out anymore yeah that's kind of my feeling as well i think that op has paid this off at that point in time when she finally does pay it off and that's that's fine right and i mean they made a mistake and they owned up to their mistake and they did what they could to make it right so i don't know actually why there's really much in the way of punishment here clearly it just was more of a misunderstanding more than anything i feel like yeah well i mean if ob has a tendency to be impulsive then it may be better not for her to have access to the credit card for a while mm -hmm. uh, so i don't think that's going too far and i think getting paid back also is perfectly fine yeah well, she also needs to know how credit cards work, too, mm -hmm. right? Because it doesn't sound like she fully understands how credit cards work uh, with interest and whatnot. And interest on credit cards can be a lot of money, right? Yeah. And it's best to pay off your credit card at the end of the month if you can afford it. Yeah, before it's due so you don't accrue the interest. Yeah, otherwise you're just paying money to use money at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And then... Lastly, what do you think of the whole not being able to return the guitar? I mean, it's unfortunate. Uh, different stores have different policies, so I don't know why. It's a really strange policy. I don't understand it because I think that you would be able to return, you know, something like that pretty easily. Yeah, especially since it was already a used guitar. Mm -hmm. You know, like if it was brand new, I could understand, you know, not necessarily being able to return it because, like, you know, once you use it, it loses some of that value. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, it was a used guitar anyway, so... Yeah. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for telling my wife that I want separate bank accounts after she spent all of our savings on a vacation? My wife, Emma, a 32-year-old female, recently surprised me, a 34-year-old male, with a dream vacation. At first, I was excited, but that excitement quickly faded when I realized that she had used all of our joint savings to pay for it without consulting me. This isn't the first time that she's made a big financial decision without involving me, but this one left us with almost nothing left in the bank. After some thought, I told her that I think that we should have separate bank accounts moving forward. I don't want to feel like our financial future is gambled on a whim, and I believe this would give us both some autonomy. Emma was furious and accused me of overreacting, saying that the vacation was a gift 
and that I should be grateful. Now things between us are tense. She's acting like I don't trust her, but in my view, it's about ensuring that we both have control over our money. I don't want this to end our relationship, but I also don't want to go through financial stress again. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? No, not the jerk. You know, this is very similar to the last situation mm -hmm. in which one partner decided to spend a lot of money from their, that should have been discussed, discussed jointly. Like, this is a joint account. This is a big purchase. OP needs to have say over it. I think he's absolutely right that separate finances are going to be important from here on out because they do need to have safe money. Yeah, I mean, I think this would be different if this was like the very first time that something happened. But it sounds like she actually has a history of doing things like this, right? And I think at a certain point, if they've already sat down, already had discussions about this, and she continues to do this, then yeah, he should demand having separate bank accounts because that's at that point in time not working for them, right? I mean, mm -hmm. this is this this arrangement currently isn't working for them. Yeah, because it's important to have you know a secure financial future, and if OP is always like oh am i like a day away from having everything wiped out again like that's not going to be good for his peace of mind and it's not good right now that they've have basically no money because she spent it all on a whim mm -hmm. and like trying to frame it as a gift when you're expecting like i know it's both of their money but he's still being made to pay for his own gift yeah exactly like it may be that they're going in on it jointly but that's still like not really a gift at the point where you're paying for it exactly exactly but let me know what you folks think so anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, I am a 38-year-old male and my wife is a 40 female and she is my landlord. What would you do? We've been married for 10 years. Wife was previously married and received a sizable divorce settlement, enough to buy a house before we met, which is our current home. So when I met her, part of the attraction is that she was financially stable and independent. Right now, I essentially pay her to live in our home which is intended to cover the HOA tax insurance, fair in my opinion, but also a bit extra to the point of contention. It comes out to a small 10% discount to the comparable value in the area. Edit example, the actual amount is higher. Pay her $3,000 a month, HOA tax insurance $2,500 a month, so she's taking $500 as income, comparable rent in the area might be $3,300. Her reasoning is that if she didn't own the property, then I would be paying the full rent elsewhere, or she would just rent the property to someone to make that extra income, and we would live somewhere else, and I'd also pay for everything. Other than that, she doesn't contribute financially, we have kids, and she's a good mom, but it makes me feel bad about always being broke. She has other rental properties and substantial savings. Problem is that in the last five years, the rent basically doubled. The property value exploded since pandemic, and I honestly can't afford to live here anymore. Her financial net worth is better than ever while I have nothing. She wouldn't compromise on her lifestyle to improve our situation. So I'm wondering if this is normal. What would you do? All right, folks, what do you think? Uh, this does not seem like an equitable situation at all. Um, now, if OP was the only income earner, I could understand paying for the house fees because, you know, as a sole income earner, you know, someone's going to pay it. But it sounds like she has her own income, so they should already be splitting the, um, you know, like the uh, the stuff accordingly. He shouldn't be expected to pay for everything. Yeah. It's really kind of gross how she's like pocketing the extra on top of that too like she's expecting him to pay for everything and then pocketing extra money and being like well it's like a rental property he's your partner not your tenant yeah like, that's really really gross well and then on top of that like the whole attitude about oh if we were to move somewhere else you would be paying all of our rent that that's a bad attitude to have she should be sp splitting half of that rent right right yeah um and it seems like he probably doesn't have his name on the house this is all hers so he's not mm -hmm. building well it's paid off but you know he doesn't have any stake in this if they divorce he's just you know throwing away all the money and she's been profiting off of him yeah my my advice to op is this say no i would go get a mortgage and then i would buy my own house and then i would charge you rent to live there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is a uh, deeply unfair situation, OP, um, and uh, I would recommend potentially 
splitting up with her if she's going to keep nickeling and diming you like this she should not be profiting off of you it's yeah. not someone who cares about you she cares about your money and what it does for her yeah i mean op is paying three thousand dollars a month right so if op is paying three thousand dollars a month then that's a ridiculous amount of money to pay on rent and everything like that. Right. OP may as well buy their own house and just get a 30-year mortgage at that level, right? I mean, like, I don't recommend that, right? 30-year mortgage, years, you basically pay twice for your house. But, you know, at a certain point, OP would be better off, you know, building equity and having their finances actually, you know, accumulate as opposed to, you know, being constantly sunk by their partner here. So, yeah, this isn't fair, this is inequitable, and OP, you know, this is not a good or normal situation. No, it's not. And to act like the like 300, like the 10% discount off of market value rent is such a deal. Yeah. No. She's just taking him for all he's worth. Oh, she is. Well, it sounds like she got a lot out of her last marriage, so she's probably, you know, just going to bleed OP dry until <laughs> she gets tired and finds someone else to bankroll her. I mean, that does, does kind of come across that way. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here. And Amber, she has a joke. What do ghosts use to wash their hair? Well, I imagine they use soap and shampoo and conditioner like everyone else, you know? Shampoo. Oh, shampoo. And speaking of spooky things, Halloween is right around the corner. So if you have sec suggestions for Halloween costumes, let me know. Yeah. Because uh, I'll probably wear costumes for our October Thursday videos. So. And I have Earl Grey. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Friday, Junior, folks. Happy Friday, Junior. Thanks so much to Amber for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And, and folks, we have a live stream coming up tomorrow. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness. But Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or, uh, and or guidance. And please have it on money. <laughs> As if you couldn't guess. <laughs> don't exploit your partner. And uh, don't make large purchases from joint finances without making sure your partner's on board. Yeah, I think that's solid advice. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.